right. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming to the Bill Track 50 free trial webinar. We will be switching in between a slide presentation and a live demo. So hopefully that doesn't give anyone vertigo. Um, but yes, so here we go. Uh, so hi, I am Karen, and I'll be walking you through the basic features um, and guiding you to a hopefully successful free trial experience. Um, please do feel free to email me anytime. I'm just Karen at Legi Nation. Uh, so drop me a note if you ever need me. Here is what I'm hoping to get through today. So I'm going to show the basics of how Bill Track 50 works. We'll take a little bit of a closer look at the data and I will highlight some different tools that I think are particularly useful. Uh, we'll look at some of our sharing options so that you can share bills with other people, both internally and with the public. And then we will hit a couple advanced topics just so that you know the kinds of things you can do and where to look to try to accomplish those things. All right, so here we go. Step one, the basics. So I'd like to show you around the navigation panel and then create a bill sheet and we'll look at all the different bill sheet stuff and how to use the grid. And then we'll talk about some of your tracking options. All right, so this is where we hopefully work get into our live demo. Okay, here we are. So this over here is the navigation panel. So this is how you get around Bill Track 50 in general. Oh, oh, there we go. Sorry. All right. So this home screen here, when you first log in, is kind of your dashboard showing you everything that happened yesterday. So the idea is we're looking at it kind of at a topic level. So as you set up your searches, this is gonna just show you your results at that search level. Um, and we will talk about setting up searches next. Uh, so this is sortable. So you can see like which of your topics have the most votes. Excuse me. Uh, which of your topics have the most votes or you can see where the most new bills are. And I'm sure you're shocked to find it's marijuana. Um, and so that is kind of, you can interact with this. If you want to see the details of the new bills in the coronavirus search, then you can say details and we'll show you like, this is the new bill and this is a new Virginia situation and whatever. Um, or you can go to your bill sheets. Now this is only showing me eight searches, it says, uh, which are the eight things that actually had a change yesterday. All of my searches that didn't have anything changed yesterday just simply aren't listed here. Um, so this is trying to boil it down to what actually changed yesterday. Um, and then the same thing for my regulation searches, if that's something you're interested in. All right, so that's how this is supposed to work. It's not meant to be a list of everything, just it's supposed to be a highlight of the changes. Um, all right, so then you can get into your list of bill sheets by coming over here to the bill sheet section. And these are all of my searches that I've set up, so somewhat more than eight. Um, and then at the top is always this view all option. And when I click on view all, I see a list, of course, of all of my bill sheets, but that's also where the new bill sheet button lives. So this is how you start a new search. So if you haven't started a search yet, you probably should. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I don't know what's in the air these days. Um, maybe mail-in voting not to start any fights, but that's a good search topic. All right, so you just give it a name and that's the name that's gonna appear in that topic list and that's the name that's gonna appear here. So it just has to mean something to you. And then make sure you select at least one state, otherwise nothing will work. So you've gotta pick where you wanna come. So you can say select all and look across the entire country and then unselect ones you don't want. Um, or of course you can just pick them out one by one. And if you're interested in just one state, great, then just pick one state. I'm gonna say select all. And then there is an option down here called United States. So this is where, how we list Congress. So if you want federal bills, you can leave it included. If you don't want federal bills, you can take them out. So I'm gonna uncheck that. And then we also have the Washington DC city council. So we'll uncheck that too. And so now I've just got my 50 states. So I've got 50 items selected. All right, so that is, make sure you pick a state. Um, and then we've got our options, contains all, contains any, and contains none. And so this is basic Boolean searching. So these are your and words, these are your or words, and these are your not words. So contains all means all of these words have to be in your bill. 
So I'm going to say I want some sort of um, voting. So I'm going to say vote. And then I'm going to say maybe absentee or mail. Um, so I'm saying I need the word vote to be in the bill for me to be interested. And then any of these words. So it also has to say either absentee or mail. So it has to have all of these words and any of these words. Right? So then I'm going to say save. And that'll go find all the bills that are about voting, mail in, or absentee. Okay? So then I get all these different items. All right? And some of them, it looks like, um, are other kinds of voting and things you might do. Although a lot of them look like what I do want. All right. So. I could maybe narrow it down a little further and say it also has to mention an election. All right. And then I can say I've got my bill type. So if I don't, if I'm not worried about resolutions, if I'm only worried about bills, then I can uncheck some of these things. Uh, I could say once they're dead, they're not interesting to me and leave those out. Um, and then a feature that you have as part of your free trial that is not available at the citizen level is this current session. So by default, we assume you're just looking at live bills that are currently being considered. But if you would like to go back in time, you can. So if you want to use this as a research tool, you can switch the current session to session years and then look at whatever span of time that you would like to look at. And if you do that, then you can maybe narrow it down just to bills that um, were signed or passed, if you'd like to just kind of survey like what's happened in the past, that kind of thing. Um, so that is an option that you can turn on. You can always switch to get this timeline. But I'm going to leave it and say, actually, I just want the current session. All right. Uh, and then I can further narrow it down to a certain committee. Uh, that works best if I'm looking in just one state or a few states. Um, because if I look right now, and I'm looking at some sort of election committee, it's going to give me every committee in the country. Um, that is something to do with elections. Uh, so, but that's fine. I could do that. I could say uh, that is what I want. I only want things going through an election committee and pick as many of them as I want. Um, but that's how you do that. So if you're say looking for coronavirus, but you want health things, not labor things, then you can narrow it down by saying, well, it needs to go through one of the health committees. Um, all right. And then you could always add bills by bill number. So in fact, you don't have to mess around with any of the search terms. If you already know your bills, then you can just type them in by bill number. Um, so you can just create exactly the list you want without doing the searching. All right, so I have my grid now. So I would like to show you a couple of grid items, unless you have any questions about the query. Would you do, did that make sense? Would you like to talk about that a little more? Would you like to maybe noodle on one of your topics? Aaron, I have a quick question. Uh, how far back is the timeline? Is that 10 years? Thank you, Mike. That is a good question. Let me turn that back on. So uh, it turns out that it is 10 years. However, that's because we started in 2011 and we've been around 10 years. So it is our 10th anniversary. <laughs> uh, next month, actually, we started in April of 2011. So it, a coincidence that it's 10 years next year it'll be 11 years uh so that's just the length of the data we've got because that's how long we've been in business so okay thank you for asking so i could shout out me the 10 years whoosh <laughs> all right um so let's go back to the grid and let me highlight some different grid features so once you've got the bills they're going to drop into this this grid, which looks a lot like a spreadsheet, which is why we call it a bill sheet, because you know that's what it looks like. So I can click on the Bill Track 50 logo to put that panel away, give myself a little more room to work. Um, of course, however big your monitor is, this thing can get as big as you want. Um, all right, so I've got these different rows, and I can sort by any row. So if I'm interested in what the most recent action is, I can sort by that and see I've got these and things in the future are always gonna be hearings that were scheduled. Um, and then otherwise I could just see like what else has gone on. Um, I can also filter. 
So if I'm interested in things that are in the crossed over category, for example, which means left the first chamber, got to the second chamber. So these are things that could well pass. Then I can, if I hover over the name of the column, I get these little lines and that is my filter. So if I open that up, it knows what kind of data I've got there. And now I can say crossed over. All right, so that will narrow it down. And so now it shows me my count that I've got 202 bills out of my 1,600 uh, are in the crossed over status. Uh, so that's how you can kind of dig in and get some different pieces of information. Um, of course, I can narrow maybe by my state as well and say I'm really only interested in talking about Arizona right at the moment, um, which narrows it down much further. Um, so you can use this sorting and the filtering to try to find answers to questions or to get right to a bill you're looking for. Um, of course, you could filter by a bill number. So if you know what number you want, you can just start typing it in and it'll narrow down and, and give you exactly the bill you want. All right. Um, and then I mentioned the filter knows what's going on. So if you want to filter on a date, it knows you've got a date. And so now I've got different choices. I've got greater than or in a range. And then that gives me, you know, I can say I want things that had something happen in March. All right. And then that'll narrow it down even further to things that had something in March. Um, all right. So that is possibly I have belabored that a little bit too much. So I so, have a question, Karen. Oh, please. Um, is it possible to export this into uh, your own spreadsheet so that you can go back later and Thank you for asking. Um, review it again? Yeah. All right. Good question. Um, so it acts like Excel, but maybe you actually want it in Excel. Uh, so down below the grid, you've got a couple of different options down here. So this export button actually just saves it out to Excel and you've got it in a spreadsheet. If you have added any custom data, which we'll talk about in a minute, so you can add your position and you can add comments, uh, it will export that information as well. Um, and so that'll just go to Excel where you can use it. It'll include the links to the bills. So that's yours to do with as you please. Uh, this print, Obviously, we're not encouraging you to print out all these bills, although you could. Uh, we'll make it into a nice looking document that you can then save to a PDF. Um, that will not include your custom data. It's just a pre laid out report that will show these bills in, in a PDF that you can then share with whoever you want. And then if you ever just want to take a peek, you can check out the map of where these bills are. Um, and of course, we'll talk more about maps later. but. That's just there for you to like grab a nice clean screenshot, put it in a PowerPoint. Um, all right. So yes, Ruby, you can absolutely get this data out. Do whatever you want with it. All right. Uh, so that is that is one of the better features of the grid is you can grab the data out and do um, format it and share it and whatever. Um, all right. So the other thing you can do is grouping. So there's a little section at the top that says drag here to set a group. So if you want to, you can basically make a pivot table. So I can grab the state up here and say group it by state. And then it'll show me how many bills I've got in each state. Um, and then I can open it up to look at those bills. Uh, but even more fun, I can say, you know what, also group it by progress. Or if you have added your position, whether you support or oppose them, you can add that in. So you can add your own data in as part of the grouping as well. Um, so now I can look at bill progress and say, okay, so for in California, I've got 29 that are in committee, three that are introduced and haven't even been sent to committee and actually one that got through. And then you can look at what that one is. All right, so the grouping can also help you just guide, kind of get your arms around the data and what is going on. Um, if you're just curious, maybe just the progress in general. You can see how many are in each different stage. Um, all right, so that is the grid. Hopefully you'll find it to be a very useful way to review your data and get to understand a little bit about um, what kinds of bills are coming back for you. You can also say um, this homeowner's one, that is absolutely not the kind of thing I'm interested in and you can just remove it. You can say, nope, and exit out. Uh, and that we call that hiding a bill. So unfortunately you didn't remove it from the legislature, 
you just removed it from your sheet. Uh, so it will stay hidden. Um, so even if the bill has something changed or is amended, it's gonna stay hidden. Um, on the query tab, you can review everything you have hidden. So all hidden bills will go into this hidden bills list. And you can bring that list up, review it and put things back. So don't feel any stress when you're going through and kind of curating your sheet and removing bills um, because you can always review your work or if you're sharing this with someone else and they are removing bills, you can review their work. Um, all right, so you can absolutely fine tune this and get this to be just exactly the bills you really want to follow using the hide and also the adding bills by bill number in the query and then between those two things, you can make this list just exactly what you want it to be. Um, oh, and once you've hidden the bill, of course, it will not export. So when you export it, you're just going to get the bills you actually care about. And if you filter and say, just show me the past ones and export, it's just going to export the past ones. So it applies the filter before the export, um, which can be pretty handy. All right. So that is the basics of the grid. Is there anything you think the grid should do that I didn't show. All right, so I mentioned that you can have custom data. And so I've got this position call. All right, I do have a, a question. Oh, please. Before we move on. So you can also, can you also search instead of bills by, uh, can you search it by sponsors? Like yes. you wanna know all the bills that a particular sponsor uh, a particular uh, politician has sponsored. Absolutely. So you can come in here and just pick a legislator and say, I want to follow um, Gary. And you're going to, this is filtering. I'm saying I just want voter bills by Gary. But if I want all bills by Gary, then I'm going to want to come in here and say, well, first of all, I need to make a Florida. Yep. Um, and then you're going to want to put a search term in that every bill has. And uh, we just skipped right to an advanced topic. That is the state abbreviation. So if you're trying to get everything that Gary introduced, put in the state abbreviation and then narrow that down, that'll give you all the bills in the state. And then you can narrow it down by bills that Gary introduced. So yes, you can absolutely search by sponsor as well. And then when he sponsors a new bill, it'll get added to your list and you can follow those bills as they go through. Um, and what's that message in the upper, for me, right-hand corner that says one hidden bills? So that is the bill that I click X on and remove. Okay. okay. So I can always go back and, re and review those, put them back. All right, so I'm not actually gonna switch to Gary. I'm gonna leave my grid kind of how it is. Um, all right, so, um, as I mentioned, you can put your own data in here. To access this, you can double click to get the list of positions, uh, or you can actually use your keyboard to just move around with your arrow keys and then hit enter and choose your position. Uh, so you can do it with the mouse or with your keyboard. We will talk about adding columns uh, later as a advanced topic but you can have as many columns as you want. You can create columns or you can choose from the columns we've got. Um, all right, so that is the grid. Let's move on to how you can track. All right, so this is great for research and for finding out what the current situation is. But if you wanna stay on top of things as uh, time moves along, then you're gonna to wanna to go to the alerts. All right, so this is where you set up what kind of notifications you would like from us. And so you've got notifications inside here and then you've got emails that you can get. So if you would like to know when a new bill gets introduced that meets your query, so either the sponsor or your search terms or whatever you set up, then you can say, let me know about new bills. And if you wanna know when any of those bills that you're following has a vote, then you can say, let me know about new votes. And then you're actually tracking the bill through the legislative process. And we'll just email you each time it succeeds in making it further along. Um, so those are good settings for just straight up tracking so that you just know what's going on. Uh, if you are actually trying to follow things super closely and you've got a list of bills 
that are very, very important to you, then you can follow them and say, let me know anytime anything happens or even anytime they're amended. Um, and that'll keep you absolutely on top of things. And then sponsor change, if you're trying to get some people to sign on, then that might be interesting. Otherwise that could be rather busy. So only track by sponsor change if you really do care when the sponsors change. Um, and then associated document is us tracking like what the website has posted, the state website has posted. And I'll show you that here a little bit later. That is very specific. And if you're just like on the edge of your seat waiting for the fiscal note and you want an alert when that comes up, then that's where you would say, I need to know about new documents the state has posted. Otherwise, again, that will be quite busy and you might not want to get alerts on all of that. All right, so that is the emails. Important point, we only send out the emails once a day. So if you set up these searches, you can set different levels on each individual search. So for example, I have my marijuana search. Maybe I only want to know about new bills for that one. And then I've got my mail-in voting. Maybe I want to track things on this one. And then maybe I set up a bill, a, a sheet, and I name it key legislation. And then I type in the five bills I care about the most. And maybe for that one, I check all of these boxes. And I want to see everything that happens with those bills. So for each different list bill sheet you set up, you can set the alerts on that bill sheet as what is appropriate for that topic for your life. Um, and I will highlight for you later, if you share this sheet with someone else, they will be able to set up alerts and they will be able to set up the level to be appropriate to them. So if you have someone who's just trying to keep an eye on things, maybe they all set it like this, and whereas you might be following it more closely. So everybody who has access to the bill sheet gets to set their own alerts for that bill sheet. All right, the other alerts down here, add bills to event schedule. I'll go ahead and do that. That will add them to this list over here, um, this event schedule list. So that just puts them over here so you can view them inside the system. And that'll give you a 30 day look at what's coming up, what bills have been scheduled to be heard in committee. And if you would like to know what the event schedule is and have it emailed to you, we will email you a second email with this week's hearings. And so it'll just be a rolling seven days. So every day we will email you all the hearings we know about um, in a separate email so that you just have that handy. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and check that and say save. Actually, I don't need emails. All right, there we go. So I have a couple of questions mm -hmm. again. So the bill sheet, um, did you say that you can do multiple bills in one bill sheet? Right, like so the bill sheet is all box. the bills that match your query or all the bills that you've typed in by bill number. So it's all of these bills is the bill sheet. Okay, but so, so like like your example was, I'm interested in voting, that's one bill sheet. Yep, I'm interested in bill marijuana sheet. bills, that's a separate bill sheet. I can't yep. put them on exactly. one bill sheet. Well, you could. So I could add marijuana terms to my query and put them all together. Um, I, okay. Yeah, but and if you want to... Can... Go ahead. Go okay, ahead. Okay, so uh, this is what's fun about uh, the web meetings, right? <laughs> um, so then my next question is, uh, so let's say you, uh, you can, uh, so from what I understand, you can combine words in a query and that way you get all the things you're interested in in one. And then you can share that bill sheet with somebody else, but, you, and if, but you don't necessarily have to, right? So if I don't, if I decide that this is only for my, my particular interest, um, can anyone else in the, who you share this program with? Okay. It's Got up it. to you. So you decide who can see your sheet. Okay. Um, and how you break them out is very much based on how you think about the topic and how you want to break it out just for your own sanity and also how you intend to share it. So if you've got some people who need to see this kind of thing and some people who need to see that kind of thing, then that might also inform how you divide out your bills. Um, so how you're going to set up, like which words you're going to put in which query 
really depends on what you intend to do with the list after you have it. So if you're trying to keep yourself informed, maybe you just want to all throw them together. Um, but if you've got some other people you're trying to communicate with, you might want to divide it up into different sec different bill sheets so that you're sharing different things with different people. So it really kind of depends on what else, what, what your goals are with the system. And of course, I'm happy to chat with you uh, separately about how, what a sensible way to organize your account is. Um, but that's one of the major decisions you have to make is how you're going to divide things up and what your different topics are going to be. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Uh, so that is tracking. That is how you set up tracking. So you set up the alerts and those emails go out. Um, all right. So any other questions before we move on to our whole next topic? One down, three to go. All right. So far so good then? All right, so on we go. So we covered that the navigation panel, how you get around down the side there, creating a bill sheet. We looked at using the grid at some length and we talked about setting up alerts so you can actually track what changes with the bills that you have chosen. Um, all right, on we go to actually looking at the data. So we did not click on a bill. Um, so we are gonna do that. And we're gonna look at a bill and look at the different pieces of data that come with the bill. All right, easy peasy. All right, so if I go back to my bill sheet, of course, you might want to review these bills before you decide if you're going to follow them. Let me look at one that has gotten a little way through the process here. Like this. Oh, oh. I don't know, picking at random here. All right. So this is the summary screen. So this will tell you the very basics about this bill, what it is, and then these get filled in as it goes through the process. Got a little bit of what's going on with it, who sponsored it, um, as well as a link to the state website so that if you wanna go look at it on the legislature website, great, we'll give you that link so you can get straight there. Uh, and of course, that's where we're getting our information from. And then we'll have the bill text. And so all of the um, bills in all of the states should look similar. Um, and we've got just underlining for what gets added. So it's, sorry, let me go back up to the top. So this is kind of the language in the bill. Uh, we're gonna amend the, to read as follows. So this is the bill. And then anything where they're quoting the law that they're changing, we try to set off in this blue cover, color so that you know this is the existing law. So this little box with the kind of the steel blue color here, uh, this is a law and they're modifying the law. That's what the bill is doing. And the underline is what they're adding to it and anything crossed out. So up here, we're saying we're removing this and that's what's being removed from the bill. Um, so that's, that's how this works. And so all of the states are gonna be that same way. We're, we, will, we do our best to identify what the law is, set that off in blue for you, and then the changes they're proposing are gonna be strike through and underlined. Um, all right, so that's how that works. We've got the different versions of the bill all stacked up here so that you can go back in time should you want to see what the bill looked like when it was first introduced. And if you wanna compare that to some later version, you can do that. Oh, they changed it a lot. How about to here? Um, so red is going to be what was removed between those two versions, and green is what was added in the new version. So this is just kind of showing you, as the bill has changed, what they've changed about what they're going to do. All right. So let's get rid of that. Um, and then we also have a tool that I want to highlight for you called Highlight. Highlight search terms. So this is a big time saver. So if I say Highlight search terms. It'll take me up and show me the first time my word appears and give me little arrows. And then I can go to the next time my, my word appears. And so if your word only appears a couple of times in a big, huge bill, this will take you straight to the section you actually need to read so that you can decide, is this relevant to as far as what I care about? Um, so then I can just kind of step through. And when I get to the end of my list, I know I have reviewed every section that had to do with my topic. So hopefully that highlight tool up here turns out to be really useful. Um, 
So don't don't be uh, don't be forgetting about that. That'll that'll save you some time reading bills. All right. Um, actions, just what you think they should be. Votes. Votes are fun because I can let, oh, this is not controversial at all. Well, uh, I can look at the detail and I'll show that we get the yeses color coded by party and the noes color coded by party. So sometimes that can give you a little, little bit of a, get your arms around what's going on with the bill. And then of course the individual votes here and you can sort on any of these columns like you can anywhere else at Bill Track 50. Um, all right, so you can really dive into the votes and see what happened. And then documents, as I mentioned, we've got all these different links. So these are different things that the state posted up about this bill that you might wanna look at. Um, and again, this just takes you right to the state legislature website or just gives you the um, official PDF. So if you wanna see the official bill text as it appears on the state website, great. We give you the link straight to there. Um, all right, so that's the basics of a bill and on the bill text, the different tools you can use like highlight and um, comparing versions that will hopefully save you time for the things that you need to do to decide if you care about this bill. All right, any questions about bills before I move on to legislators? Hopefully that's kind of exactly what you were hoping <laughs> the bills would look like. Um, all right. So then, of course, we've got all the legislators in here as well. So from the vote screen or from the list of sponsors, you can always click on a legislator. And we will have whatever other links that we know about for them. So their Twitter, maybe we'll have a LinkedIn, maybe we'll have a YouTube channel for them. We almost always have an email. Um, so of course, you can click this to actually start writing your email, or you can right click it and say copy email address if you want to grab it and use it later. Um, all the different ways to reach out to them, all the different links we have found for them. Um, so if they have a campaign site, we'll often have that. Um, link to Ballotpedia so you can see how their last election went, link to follow the money so you can see about their campaign finance. So those are just external links. We don't maintain that. Ballotpedia and follow the money maintain that, but we figure that's useful information. So we've tried to give you different things you might want to see. And then we've got uh, the bills that uh, Senator Bollinger has sponsored and his last hundred votes. So you can see what that looks like, what committees he's on and who else is on the committee and the a little bit of a bio about him. And then in legislatures with full-time staff, so let me like find a California bill, for example. Bill here. We'll also have another tab that says staff. So for many states, we'll have a staff and that'll just give you a few people extra that you can reach out to. And of course, for Congress, we've got tons of people in here with all kinds of different titles um, for you to reach out to. So the legislator data is, well, hopefully organized in a sensible way and hopefully plenty of it. So you'll be able to reach out one way or the other. Um, all right, so if you ever need to get straight to a bill or straight to a legislator, there's always this quick search. So this quick search is the free tool that is available on Bill Track 50. Um, so you still have access to it, obviously. So you can go to bills and type in any word or any bill number and we'll just bring that list back. So if you, if you're just trying to explore something and you're not ready to create an entire bill sheet and go through all of that, you can always just look up a bill real quick or see if some term has been popping up a lot in other states or whatever you wanna do. You always can still just wander around the database using the quick search. And then we also have the legislator search. So you can also look up any legislator you need anytime. My representative is Alec, um, there he is. And so I can go, you know, just directly to a legislator if I know their name or really anything about them. So I could also say, I don't know, but I do know <laughs> he's in Colorado. Uh, so you can do that and say search, and just get all the legislators in Colorado. Um, so yeah, that is the legislator quick search if you're trying to get directly to a person. So hopefully that is somewhat self-explanatory, anything any questions here about using this?
All right, back to the slideshow. Okay, uh, so sharing. That is, I think, the beauty of Build Track 50 is it's really easy to share. So let me show you how that works. Uh, oh, and here's my slide for it. People love maps. So we'll look at the map in particular, um, but we also have a bunch of other ways that you can share as well, including our app. So let's take a look at all of that. All right. Um, doo -doo -doo. Back to my bill sheet. So if I am looking at, for example, marijuana bills, simple search, I don't even remember what it was. Ah, marijuana. Okay, so now I can go to widgets. And I have two different choices of widget. So I'm gonna start with the map widget. So these are marijuana bills introduced this year, or I don't know what years, probably this year. Um, and you can actually put this on your website and it is interactive and people can click and see what are the new bills in their state. And of course, anybody can click and go read a bill right from the widget. We don't make them sign up for Bill Track 50 or anything, just click and boom, they're reading the bill. So this is a great way to share information if you have people that you are trying to keep informed. You can have this on your website behind a login. So if you've got members and you only want the members to be able to see it, just put it behind where they log in. Or if you're trying to inform the public, then you can inform the public. Or if you're trying to frighten people about how much uh, is going on so that they should be customers of yours, then you can use a shock and awe uh, approach and like put it right on your homepage and say, look how many bills there are. Uh, that usually works. Um, all right, you can also customize this so that it looks like you want it to. So maybe if it's about marijuana, we'll turn it a little bit green. Um, and so you can make it look like that and then put it up on your website. When you click on a state and it slides over, you are in control of what columns show up and you can have all of your own information in here if you like. Um, so you can actually customize this as much as you like as well. So any place where we've got one of these grids, you are in control of what goes in this grid and it can always include custom data. Um, so again, I will highlight how you customize stuff in our advanced topics section coming up soon. All right, so that is the map. You say generate script and just paste this on your website. And then whenever new bills get added to your bill sheet, they'll be on your website right away. Um, whenever you hide a bill, it comes out of the map right away. So it just it's just tied right to that bill sheet. So any changes you make get changed on the website immediately. So you only have to paste this up once and then it just stays current automatically. All right, and if you are only looking at one state or you're only looking at five bills and you don't need an entire map, then you can look at the bill widget. And so you can make just a little list of bills and put this on your website anywhere you want. We will keep it current. So we will keep the status updated all the time. Anyone can click and go read the bill. Um, again, you can put this behind a login or you can just inform the entire public with it. Uh, same exact thing. You just grab this, copy it, paste it on your website. And then as you add and remove bills, the little list updates. Also a good feature is if you've got a if you've got some people working with you who only want maybe the California bills, you can actually make the widget for a single state. And I'm gonna say test. Um, and that'll make a California widget. So it's just pulling the California bills out of your list. So you can then hand this code to anyone you want to and they can put the widget on their website limited to just that state or they can set up a group of states. So they can have it be like the whole, you know, Oregon, Washington, California, or whatever. Um, so you could use these for yourself. You can also share them. You know, that code is yours. You give it to anyone you want. Um, and then it will stay in line with your bill sheet. So as new pills come in or as you remove bills, um, the list will reflect your current, your current bill sheet. Um, so that is the bill list widget. Um, any questions about those before we look at the stakeholder page? All right, hopefully you find these to be useful and you can like just scatter them around. 
little bit of bling for your website. It's current data, it's deep data, because of course people can click and go and look at the sponsors and all of that. So it's, it's pretty good. Um, okay, stakeholder pages. So this is how you might share the bills instead of in a list or a map, you can share in the entire grid. So if you want to, you can actually embed this whole grid right in your website. And then people can sort and filter and group and do all the things that you can do with the grid. But what they don't have is the X. So they can't remove bills and there's no query tab or anything like that. So they can't change anything. They can't enter data, but they can look at all the bills and sort and filter and use the extra information you have added um, to really start to understand these bills. So if you have a sophisticated audience who would appreciate having access to like the whole the whole kickaboodle all at once, um, then you can in fact in, embed the entire grid in your website. Um, so that's what the stakeholder page is for. If you share the stakeholder page with people inside your account, then you also have an extra feature, which we call the forum. So you also can have a place where people can discuss the bills on the stakeholder page. So if you have stakeholders, uh, so a government affairs committee or um, other organizations you're coordinating with or whoever is interested in these bills and cares how they turn out, um, you can invite them into your account, share just the stakeholder page with them, um, and then they'll be able to see the bills, see the status all the time, interact with them, but also come here to the forum and add a comment and people can reply to that comment. So this is just kind of a, a legislative slack, if you will. So it's always got the current bill info there and then people can come and put comments um, or questions or whatever, or you can post extra information you want people to know. But this is completely private because you control who sees it because you're controlling who has an account. So it's password protected and you can remove any person at any time, add new people when you need to, and that's the forum. And it's just a normal post and reply. All right, so that is very powerful internal collaboration, but also you can post it to your website if you just wanna get that grid going so people can interact with that. All right, um, the stakeholder page, I'm gonna go to the manage tab here. Uh, so this is tied to a specific bill sheet. So you're just publishing a bill sheet, but you also have the option to make it public. Um, and that's when you can put it on your website. So here's the code that you would just put up on your website and then share this stakeholder page with the mobile app. If you do that, then you've got this little code. So you would share this code with people or you can make a QR code and the directions are here um, and share the QR code with people. And then they'll be able to look at your list of bills inside the Bill Track 50 app. So if you would like people to be able to get notifications about the bills to their phone, um, if you've got people who are really keen and wanna follow your bills, you can actually give them an, an app that has your bills in it, your comments in it, and then we'll send them notifications if they want. Of course, they can turn them off uh, so that they can see the bills as they move through the process so that they're in the loop as well. So that is another feature, another way that you can keep people informed. And again, this can be just people you share with or you can put it on your website and it can be anyone who cares about your topic can follow your bills. Um, so that is tied to the Bill Track 50 app. All right, so tons of ways to share and absolutely reach out to me if you need any help setting up any of these. Um, all right, and then the last thing that we have is our stakeholder pages. And so these are an extra charge, but uh, what you do is set up what bills that you care about and then if you like them or not. So I gave this one four stars out of five. This one got minus two, I didn't like it, but it wasn't the worst. Um, so you just give them a rating and then we add together how everybody voted on those bills and show you who was most your ally and who was least. Um, you can give extra credit for if they sponsored a bill. Um, and then you can click on an individual person and see how they voted on each of the bills you cared about. So yes on this one, yes on this one, and I didn't like it, so lost two points on that. And yes on this one, got a point for that. Um, you can also see how things went down uh, by party. 
you can see how things went down by district. And this could be private so that just you have this information handy for yourself. Or again, you can post them on your website and you can put them behind a password or you can put it up for the whole public to see and interact with. Um, so that is the scorecard. So that is another way that you can share information. This time from a legislator point of view instead of from the bill point of view. But this is just simply bills and votes. So it is just facts. So it is arguably not electioneering. Um, obviously you have to make your call on that. Um, all right, so those are the sharing tools. Any question about any of those before we get into our final topic? All righty, moving on. Okay, so people do love maps. All right, um, advanced topics. So I wanted to show you some of the ways that you can customize Bill Track 50. Um, so we talked a little bit with Ruby about how you can organize your account and break up your searches to be how you need them to be. Um, but you can also customize the grid to be like you want. You can, as you saw, I, me customize the map. There's lots of ways customize things. And so we want to be your memory foam. We want to fit around you and what you need. We don't expect you to like do it the Bill Track 50 way. Uh, we want to make sure that you are getting it the way you need it to so that you can be successful. All right. So uh, two main topics there, which oh, we'll just go back to slides real quick. Um, good quote to encourage you to Get on it. Um, did it my way? Alrighty. And oh, I didn't have a slide listing what I wanted to talk about. My bad. Okay. Um, are you guys still there? I feel like I'm talking to myself. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. I'm sitting on the edge of my seat. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, that was the encouragement I needed. Um, all right. So up here, this is the account menu. And so there's two very important items in the account menu uh, that I wanna highlight. The first is manage users. So this is where you can add people to your account. Bill Track 50, um, all the subscriptions, every subscription includes unlimited users. So you can add anyone in here that you want to. And we feel really strongly that you should be able to add anyone because the alerts are gonna go to that person's email address. So sharing logins is, is just, you won't have as good an experience because you want to get your email. Somebody else might want to follow something slightly different. So we want you to be able to just add in as many people as are going to use the tool. Uh, so they don't have to be in your organization. You can add anyone you like. Um, we do have an enterprise level, which lets you add groups of people and then they can manage things within their groups. So if you have state chapters um, or, you know, you're working with specific organizations and you want to let them in, uh, that's possible, but mostly, just the normal Bill Track 50 is fine and you can just add as many people as you need and then they can see whatever you share with them. So I'm gonna add a user real quick. Okay, so you, first name, last name, email address. That's all you need to get them added. And then we have a little description line which is for you to use later when you're trying to find people. So if you wanna like put their department in there or the state they care about, whatever, you can use that however you want to. Just a reminder to yourself uh, about this person. Okay, and then you can make them a security administrator, which means they can control permissions. And I'm about to show you permissions. It also means they can add and remove users. So it lets them also do everything with users. And then there's the template administrator. And the template is how you control the grid and the columns and the custom data. Uh, so that's the appearance of things. And that is our second topic. So we'll get to templates next. Uh, but you can decide who should be allowed to change the appearance of things and who should be allowed to help you manage users. So if you've got a state chapter, you can give them security and one person there is security admin, and then they can add and remove and manage their chapter and, and you don't have to get involved. All right, so then you may or may not want to make them an administrator, depends who they are. And then on the bill sheets, you can add, you can share whatever it is you want with them. So I am looking at all of my bills sheets here. So I've got break materials 
And so I can say, okay, this person I'm adding, they should be able to view break materials, but I don't want them making any changes. Or they can make comments, they can put in a position or they can type into the grid, but I'm not gonna let them change the bills or X out bills or change my query. So comment just lets you add comments into the grid. Query is when they can change the bills. So query lets them have the X's and remove bills if they want to. And also the query tab so they can add words and otherwise change the query. And then manage lets them do everything with it, including change who else can see it, uh, change the name of it, delete it. Um, so if you have someone who's just gonna be helping, then you can give a manage permission and then they can do everything with it. So for each person, you decide what they're allowed to see. Um, and you're in very good control about what people can do. So when you create a bill sheet, it's private just to you and no one else sees it. When you're ready to share it, if that time ever comes, then you can come in and edit the user you want to see it and share that bill sheet with them. So you're in control of that, um, who sees it and when they start to be able to see it. And of course you can come in here and change it again anytime and take away permission. Same thing goes for stakeholder pages and regulation sheets and scorecards. So if you create a scorecard and you get it like you want it, then you can share it with somebody or not. Um, so you get to really, if you think about how you wanna organize it and who should be doing what, each person can have a really good experience and have just the main things they need. Plus, of course, everyone can make their own searches and they're just in their own accounts and they're not gonna clutter up your account. Um, and you know they can do what they need to do and then have the main stuff that you're all sharing. Uh, so if you think carefully about how you wanna organize things and divide out the work and invite people to see certain things, um, you can really, as you see, it's really quite flexible um, and you can set it up however you need it to. And we are happy again to chat with you about what makes sense for how you wanna organize your users as well as what makes sense for how you want to organize your bill sheets. Um, and obviously those two interact with each other. So depending who your users are and how many and what you want them to see, um, that, will de de that will involve these settings, but also how you divide up your bill sheets and what search terms you've got. Um, so if we think that through, uh, then you can really make this do exactly what you want it to do. And of course, you can change your mind anytime. So it's not like you got to get it right out of the gate. You can change bill sheets. You can add and remove anytime. You can add and remove users. You can change around your permissions. So it's not, there's not a lot of pressure. We can try something, see how it goes, and then change it. Um, so then that is user management. Any questions on this before we move to templates? Hopefully you find unlimited users to be helpful and, and you can invite everybody and it turns out great for you. All right, so bill sheet templates. So this is the system where you add and remove columns and add and remove templates where you control what columns appear. And I'm only gonna spend a second on this. There's a lot uh, of customization you can do in here and I'm really happy to work with you to get your bill sheet to look like you want it to look or your stakeholder page or your map or anywhere, your regs. Um, but basically here at the bottom is the list of all of the columns that we have available that we will keep updated. And you've got a bunch of top choices here. You wanna put the link to the state bill. Do you wanna see the last action date, whatever. So there's a lot of options here, um, but you can also add a column of any type um, so you can put numbers in or links, or you can make your own dropdown list or just leave it as freeform text, give it a name. Um, and then that column becomes available for you to add to any template. Um, so you can have just as many columns as you want. And then you just edit your template and just check on and off the different columns you want. So now it's not in there. Now it is. So you can go through the different columns, including your own columns, which will be at the bottom, um, and just include whichever things you need to include. You can also choose how to sort it. And then what is pinned is basically what's frozen, like freeze frame for um, Excel. So I like to have like this, the bill ID stuck to the side so that when I scroll, the bill ID stays stuck. But you can experiment with all of that. You can even change the size of the columns. You really can make it look just like you want. 
And when you decide you're ready to share, you can create a template that has fewer columns so that you don't overwhelm the people you're sharing with. Maybe you don't wanna share your own personal notes, so you don't include that column. So you can include a smaller set of stuff that is appropriate for the public to see or for your members to see or for your boss to see, whatever. So you can create an extra template uh, for sharing with each different kind of person you're gonna share with and include the appropriate information. Um, and so, yeah, that's templates. Get in there, have some fun. You can at least mess around with your default one and try out all the different columns and try adding some of your own columns so you can put your own comments in there. Um, and then the last item I wanted to talk about, let me go back and save you all on Bill Sheets, is we are really genuinely happy to work with you to customize whatever you need. So if you need a custom report, if you don't like our exports, we are happy to make a report for you that looks just like you want. And then you'll have an extra report section down here. Uh, if you have three sheets that you have written and you would like them to combine into one sheet because you wanna make a map that covers those three things, no problem. We can roll those up for you and create that map for you. Um, if you have one sheet like autism and you actually would like to break it into five different regions because you have five people tracking, um, no problem. Let me know the regions and I will break that out for you. Um, so we can do whatever you need. You just have to ask. So start with the basic system. Think about how you want to organize it. And then wherever there are gaps for how it works right now, we will work with you to get it organized and add extra roll-ups or breakouts or reports or whatever you need to get you all the way home. Um, so really we are thrilled with requests. Um, and then if you have a great idea, maybe we'll add it as a new feature. Most of the things you're looking at are features that customers requested um, and we add it in. So uh, we'd love to hear what you're actually doing and what you need so that we can make Bill Track 50 better for everybody. All right, you made it. So thank you for coming. Um, any last questions about Bill Track 50? Anything I can do for you? Uh, no, this was actually very interesting. Um, so thank you for Great. Uh, the presentation. Um, thank I you for coming. It, it was very useful. That's great. Sure. All right, guys, um, please do follow up with any questions to me. You can use the um, contact us page that has a way to set up a meeting or it's got my email address if you just want to chat. Um, so we are absolutely here for you to help you just as much as you need. Um, anything that doesn't seem right or anything you can't figure out how to do at your service. <laughs>